we'll start with the next chapter for economics that's chapter 3 poverty as a challenge now in a layman's language we can say if we want to define poverty uh, it would vary from country to country but uh, in simple terms we can say the availability of the basic three amenities that's the roti kapda and makan the food shelter and clothing are the essential parameters for any individual now when it comes to India, you have a kind of huge population which lives below poverty line. So nearly one third of the world's poor lie in India, of which you have every one in 11 child that is working and every one in four person that is poor. Half of the child deaths under five years are due to malnutrition. Now you have some of the pockets which are really poor, we have the Bimaru states or you can say Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Jharkhand, Odisha, Chhattisgarh and West Bengal are the major uh, states which are affected by uh, kind of poverty. However, on the other side you have states like Maharashtra and you have the southern states which are flourishing well in comparison to the northern states. Again, uh, India is only nation which is one of the single largest concentration, which has the single largest concentration for poor in the world. And the 2016 World Wealth Report uh, also explains that in India you have the most unequal distribution of land with nearly 60% of the total wealth accumulated by merely 1% of the top people. So you have a kind of huge income gap or in income disparity that occurs. Now if we move from one nation to another nation, there is no fixed or one definition that we can explain or that can help you understand poverty. A person who does not own a car uh, in United States could be considered as a poor but on the other hand car in India is considered to be a luxury. So there is no one common definition that you can explain throughout the world. However, uh, there have been uh, efforts to bring all the nations at one parity and explain uh, the kind of uh, minimum base for the availability or to define the poverty. So it was decided as dollar 1.25 per day as the minimum requirement. Now <clears throat> in India you have various definitions that have come up over the time period. It is started with the consumption of calorie then it switched on to income. So there has been kind of food consumption, income uh, then now the most recent ones are focused on the concept of social indicators, the availability and the schooling facilities, the health indicators and there is another term that we would discuss is the social exclusion. Now based on calories it is believed that uh, 2400 calories per day for rural area and 2100 for urban area would be the optimum. Since rural people require more of physical work uh, to be done, they require more of calorie consumption. Based on income, it was demarcated in 2000 as Rs. 328 in rural areas per month and Rs. 454 in urban areas per month. Uh, now for a family of 5, it was given as Rs. 1640 for rural areas and 2270 for urban areas. These uh, indicators were brought after an extensive sur survey done by NSSO that is the National Sample Survey Organization. Now as we said World Bank defined the international poverty line based on the purchasing power parity that is the PPP and it was 1.25 per day. In 71 Dandekar and Rand defined based on the calorie consumption that we have talked about. In 2001 multidimensional poverty index was given which said nearly 6.25 weight is given to the assets that a person owned and 33% given to the uh, education and the years spent in school. So this was another dimension based on which poverty was uh, analyzed. Then it shifted on to income level and consumption. Later it, on as we said there were focus on social indicators. Uh, 
And finally, there was the idea of social inclusion that came up which said where poor is excluded from the social equality or not. So, identify the uh, areas where you have poor who are excluded from the social equality and this social exclusion is considered both as a cause and a consequence. So, you can say because of the social exclusion there has been rise in the case of poverty and since a person is poor as a consequence he is socially excluded from the society. So, it is a kind of both cause and consequence for the same problem. Now, you have this world map which shows the areas with less than dollar uh, 1.25 uh, per day and you can see most of those marked in yellow are the well to do nations with less than 2 percent which record under such case. However, the areas marked in light blue are the areas of severe distress. So, you have a kind of high problem where more than 40 percent of the people do not earn less than uh, do not earn a kind of dollar 1.25 per day. Now, what are the issues related to poverty? Because of poverty, you have kind of uh, problems related to landlessness, the size of family affects the poverty level, then you have illiteracy, the level of education, the health facilities, the malnutrition, child labor and you can say joblessness, helplessness and landlessness are all related to poverty. However, if we talk about certain groups in the society, you have the average Indian poverty ratio that comes around 26. However, if you come up to specific sections of the vulnerable groups, you have nearly 51 percent poverty that is seen in shuttle tribes. Then you have the urban casual labors as 50 percent. Then you have the uh, kind of rural agricultural labors and shuttle caste which also contribute much higher percentage than the average percentage that we have. As a result, you have uh, problems that are related to food security. So, you have hunger, uh, lack of shelter, lack of clean water and sanitation facilities. Again, uh, poor people might be ill treated. So, Gandhiji had rightly said India would be truly independent only when the poorest of the poor is free from human suffering. So, it is the basic focus was on the uh, poverty since the time of independence and we have been working hard to uh, work around the issue of poverty. So, there have been ma many anti-poverty measures that have been taken. Now, what are the basic causes? So, I can say it is started all with the colonial era. So, most of the kind of wealth drain or I could say the drain uh, which took from India uh, was the main cause of poverty. So, the rural economy was affected. Most of the resources that we had were taken away by the Britishers. So, there was uh, with the rise in population, there is heavy pressure on the land. It creates problems related to unemployment and underemployment. There is not enough industrialization to accommodate people. Then there are social factors, economic policies that affect uh, kind of certain sectors badly and there has been problems of poverty which are seen uh, rising in certain sectors. With technological advancement, there is less requirement for man manpower. Uh, again, there has been unequal distribution of asset as we have talked about the recent study where 60 percent of the wealth is accumulated by only 1 percent of the top Indian population. So, you have the lack of land resources. So, all these are some of the major causes of poverty. Now, poverty acts like a vicious cycle. So, what happens if a person is poor, there would be lack of education and lack of job that would lead to exploitation by the em uh, employer which would lead to uh, instability in the economic setup. Again, as a consequence, there would be unhygienic surroundings, there would be malnutrition issue and economic drainage would take place. Finally, the person would again fall into the, uh, uh, the kind of loan issues and uh, uh, finance issues. As a result, the poverty would further tend to increase. So, it is a kind of vicious circle that goes and on on and on. However, if we compare from 1993 to 2012, we can see that the poverty in the rural areas has decreased by nearly 50 percent from 50 percent that existed in 93 to nearly 25 percent in 2011. Similarly, there has been a significant drop in urban and the total population that could be seen here. So, poverty is definitely declining in India. Now, if you look onto the state wise picture, previously 
Odisha and Bihar were considered to be the worst of states in case of uh, the poverty analysis. However, in the recent uh, decades, from 2004 to 2012, we have a study uh, and this shows in Odisha, you have the poverty that is decreased from 57% to 32%, a 25-point decrease and similar decrease has been seen in Bihar from 54% to 33%, so nearly 22% decline in the, popula uh, in the poverty or the people below poverty line. Again, the best of states are Goa, Kerala, Himachal Pradesh, Punjab and Pondicherry and the worst of states include the states of uh, Jharkhand, Manipur, Arunachal Pradesh and Bihar. Again, you have the Bimaru states out of which only Rajasthan is doing better than the national average. So, except all four are um, below the national average. Again, there has been a decline in the rural poverty from 326 to 217 and so is the case in urban. Now there have been different factors in the different states which have led to increase in the standard of living or kind of better income groups. We will understand those case by case. So in the case of Punjab and Haryana, it was because of the uh, increase in the agriculture. So it was better agriculture, better employment and um, getting people out of poverty. In Kerala, it was due to increase in the human resource development. West Bengal, it was mainly due to the land reforms, the land reforms that have taken place. And in Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu, it was mainly due to the public distribution system or the availability of basic uh, uh, amenities to each and every individual. If you look on to global scenario, again there has been decline from 28% to nearly 21% in 2001. However, China, Southeast, uh, Southeast Asia are the worst affected states, but these states are again, uh, these nations are again uh, doing better because of the economic growth and more investment in human resource development. Uh, in China alone, there has been a decline by nearly one fourth, so you have one third, so you have a kind of, uh, uh, it was 600 million and it became nearly 200 million in 2001, so nearly a kind of two third population is out from poverty. Then you have the Sub-Saharan Africa which has shown an increase in the poverty lines and again uh, the Millennium Development Goals talks about decreasing the people who are less than, uh, who are less than, uh, who are surviving at a uh, wage of less than one dollar per day to nearly half of the existing number. So let's say if it is presently 100. They aim to bring it down to 50 by 2015. So that's one of the uh, Millennium Development Goals that was set up and based on that you have seen advancements in the poverty line. Now this diagram shows the people living in uh, poverty line or below the uh, poverty line which was defined internationally. So as you can see there has been a drastic decrease in the number in case of China which has shown a sharp decline. You have Sub-Saharan Africa which has, which has increased, East Asia and Pacific and South Asia are also doing be better. However, the most developments in human resource was seen in case of China and East Asia and the Pacific regions. The next is anti-poverty measures. Now definitely the best way is to provide employment. Once you have a kind of employment, there is a security and that security will definitely bring uh, more of uh, kind of economic growth and get people out of uh, the poverty trap. So you have better education, better agriculture and more investment in human resource that is required. As a result, there were many anti-poverty programs that were started. The common ones that we will be discussing today are the first one, the NRGA that is the National Rural Employment Guarantee that provides 100 days of guaranteed employment to every rural household in the 200 districts and later it was extended to 600 districts and it sought to ex expand further. But this tells that if you do not get employment within 15 days, there would be a kind of daily unemployment allowance that would be provided. The next is the National Food for Work program that talks about the 150 most backward districts and providing people food in lieu of the work they do would be uh, the kind of program and it would be 100% centrally sponsored. Uh, the next is Pradhan Mantri Rojgar Yojana in 1993. It aimed at creating self-employment in uneducated, unemployed youth. Then you have Rural Employment Guarantee Program in 1995, again aimed at self-employment. So as you can see, most of the problems of the poverty or the anti-poverty drives are 
uh, have a base in the employment and the job creation. The next is Swan Jayanti Gram Swarajkar Yojana in 1999. It again assisted poor to get them above the poverty line and it was a kind of uh, mixed help from uh, bank credit and government subsidies that were provided. Finally, you have the Pradhan Mantri Gramudaya Yojana in 2000 which provided the basic uh, health and primary education facility. Then you have the Antodaya Anna Yojana and so on. However, despite of the measures that have been taken place, you have still many challenges that are ahead. So, providing health care to each and every person at an affordable price, providing free and compulsory education not only for the primary as it is presently, but even for the higher education and college education, uh, the school, uh, upper, uh, upper primary, then you have the middle education and finally the college education providing job and security to all and bringing all the genders at equality. Above all, dignity for poor is the main aim for all the anti-poverty measures or the uh, measures that the government is undertaking. With this, we cover the third chapter on economics. We will be covering the final chapter for class 9th economics in the next class. Have a good day ahead.